What is this thing? It's a race car, just don't know it yet. <laughs> Yeah. That's don't look like no race car, Jason. Uh, not currently. I mean, you got vision. I know you know where we're going. <laughs> I do know where we're going with this. Next victim for a chassis delete? Absolutely. It's kind of the next evolution in our little razor buggy chassis and moving forward with it. So, yep. so yeah, I know as well as anybody what this thing's about <laughs> and what it's for, but why this machine? I know you've built two other razors. Two other, you had a little green and you had a little blue. So like, what was green? Green was uh, an XP1000, so it's a naturally aspirated trailing arm, A-arm front suspension machine. I think they're rated somewhere around 140 horsepower. Yep. It was a great little trail car, got around really well, just was not fast enough. We went to blue and it was pro XP based, so we picked up the RS1 style dip. We had a good dip, bigger axle shaft, yep. bigger CVs. We picked it all the way up to 185, 186 horsepower. And what year model machine was that? That was a 2020. 2020. So it was what before did it these came out. Yep. All right. And then, of course, what really kicked off our whole Razor program was when we built Huber, the the original race car that he raced KOH in. Yeah, absolutely. Like that, getting that car done to where he could run it in KOH, I mean, dude, we learned a ton when we were doing it as absolutely. far as how the parts work, how they all went together. Yeah. Up until that point, we'd never taken a Razor completely apart. No, we hadn't. We were we were building a lot of cages and everything else, but we all knew the, the downfalls in the chassis, and that's why we build chassis here. That's what we do. I mean, whenever you look around, like, we don't work on anything in the shop that's not built on one of our chassis. So, like, us building a chassis for a vehicle is, like, we always figure out that, that way to really improve and do everything else. Yeah, and, like, the weight saving, strength increases, yeah. getting rid of all the plastic. At the end of the day, <laughs> you're building a much safer <laughs> platform to ride in yeah. and there's nothing that wants to catch on fire and you know like side by sides as a whole in the whole industry like people aren't careful with them and they catch on fire and well they do that but then it's like usability of it like this is a this is a really nice machine you traded for i'm looking at it and i'm like man this thing's clean as a pin but it's still got scuffs in the plastic because it has been off road in just a little bit like you go to a buggy size you are narrowing down the cockpit visibility is insanely better everything else so like man like i know all the benefits and everything else but you really touched on what this thing is is like we built hubert a race car he went and raced koh he actually finished all the miles of koh he didn't do it within a lot of time yeah, barely, barely, missed it. barely missed the time window cut off you built two trail machines you got this real itch like where are you going racing uh we are getting this thing done so we can go race king of the hammers i've been chasing the dream of going out there and racing for a very, very long time. I think this will actually be, I think my 11th year out there. Yeah. And we pitted for tons of different crews. We have a great time. We go out and we pre-run with everybody and love being out there. Love helping all our buddies out. And every year when we're in the truck or on the airplane on the way home, I'm like, it's time to oh, do it. Man, I mean that I race hammers. I've, I've co-drove it, I've drove it and man there's nothing like it i told you like if i had unlimited resources money and time it would be like i would i would ultra four race over any other form of race and i've ever been around just because like i love the thrill of the adventure of it we've always talked about from the business side we ought to do this as a product but the shop's not ready when you built little green it's like we ought to do this for a project but the shop's not ready we ought to do it when we did little blue it's like man we're getting close I think we just, with Little Blue, it was like the final dial in. I really wanted to get a ton of seat time yeah. in it to make sure there wasn't something that was wrong or could be better or any of the above, just to get the platform where it was really dialed in. Those three machines, absolutely, like they all progress yeah. a lot in what we're doing. Um, so, as cool as all of them were, the direction we're headed in this new machine is going to be that much better. I've seen the CAD drawing of where this thing is headed and it is the vision out of it, insane. Seating position out of it, crazy low. And I know from driving blue, what little bit of time I was in it, like, dude, that thing was on rails. And the fact that you could sit in a driver's seat and you saw that, that right front tire come up over the hood a lot when you were crawling or driving fast, the visibility out of that thing was, was killer. 
and we both said right off the bat after we got it done it was like it could even be better as soon as we got done it's like we looked at it and it's like we can move this move this move <laughs> this and you'll be able to see even better out of it yeah everybody that ever rode with blue was always like man that thing's cheating it's it's an easy button it's an easy button yes and it really yeah. was just due to the performance that we were able to draw out of it and the visibility in it and so tell me what's the reason you chose this machine to be your new race car definitely want to stay polaris yeah like i've had a, a lot of looking into like the can-am stuff that new maverick r is an incredible machine oh, ain't no doubt timeline has a lot to do with it this year <laughs> yeah uh, we can talk about that a little bit later but yeah. When they went to the Pro R and the Turbo R, they got rid of the wheel bearing setup that was in there and went to a unit bearing. Okay, so this thing's got like a full straight up package deal unit bearing. Yeah, like the automotives, the same kind of stuff we use in Crane with our 14 bolt axles. And Absolutely. Everything. Solid, like they're holding up really well. Everybody's had, you know, really uh, okay. having good luck with them. The other thing, like the all the parts got more heavy duty. Axle shafts got bigger, like the transmission got stronger. Dude, look at the size of the, I mean, just the, the CVs and stuff in this thing. All this stuff just looks bigger. It looks incredible. Just your CVs are bigger. The actual shaft diameter itself is bigger. Uh, steering racks got stronger. There was I'll, improvements all over the board from, from Polaris and their okay. stock machine. So this thing, whenever it comes out, it's got a pretty decent shock package on it. I love the fact from a geometry standpoint, that we're hooking the shock on the lower a arm with this big fork because then whenever you're talking about the pivot table you're hooked up on that lower arm instead of the upper arm it's got to feel more stable driving this thing it does and i think the other thing it's going to help us do and it feeds into the visibility side of it is keeping the shocks lower in the front to increase more visibility out of front end. we're going to upgrade a lot of this stuff as we go along just because of you're building a race car what i love about this platform though is you can literally go buy this thing off marketplace come to us for what we're going to do with this racer chassis program and leave with a running driving machine and not really buy a lot of extra stuff like this is what appeals to me about the racer deal is like when we're building a buggy you're starting from ground zero and the way buggies are built now with all these aftermarket parts there is no in between like this literally you may not like the tires you may not love the trailer arms the a arms the anything else but the chassis we're fixing to build is going to be directly you just bolt all that stuff back on yeah you can reuse whatever you want to reuse and change out for upgrade to aftermarket stuff or whatever you want all the aftermarket companies that are following polaris and the razor are building parts to fit that stock machine yeah we're going to keep the ability to use whatever so aftermarket we, parts you want yeah so when we build our buggy chassis and it fits all these factory parts like you're able to come in and just put a heavier duty trailing arm or a high clearance trailing arm or a billet trailing arm or whatever else that's built to fit this stock machine it'll go right to that razor buggy that's our idea absolutely also if you want to come in and do long travel you buy a long travel kit from whoever's making it. all these great guys out there just making all these great products that or suspension based and everything else will like it'll bolt right to that new chassis exactly you don't have to do it all at one time no you can That's, do it in pieces and a lot of the reason why this machine was really like chosen is this is pretty much what's out there you look at it's got 35s on b locks it's got an exhaust it's got an aftermarket cage it's got a stereo in it this is what the general people that you bump into out at windrock and everybody's riding absolutely so, it matches that you can find these all over marketplace people are upgrading yeah. changing doing things and you know life changes whatever selling them but yeah this is a very staple part of like what is out there and i really wanted it to be that way so that i could see that you can just take this machine and this can be whatever you want it to be at the end yeah and we don't have to go through and do all of the upgrades you're going to do a pile of upgrades because we're building a race car but like, we'll also, as we're going through and we do this, I want to show the people like, what do you have to do and what you don't have to do? And that that's going to be something that we'll cover as we're going through and doing this, because we want to document this whole build. We want to show the fact that you're going to build this thing in how many days? How many days you got to go to start line? I believe we're 75 days to the open of yep. the hammer's gates open. And I think we're like 81 or 82 days from actual race day. All right. So we got long nights and long weekends. 
Speaking of that, we got a full schedule here in the shop. How are we going to do this? How are you going to do this? Like, I'm in to help you. You know, there are guys around here are here to help you. But, like, I, we got to talk about, like, we got guys waiting in line in the shop. How are you going to do it? Absolutely not going to mess with customer time at all. Uh, when I did Little Blue two years ago, it was one of these deals where I would clock out on Friday after work and I'd go home sometime on Sunday. Yeah. That's the way I can grind. It's the time that my life has to give to do it. So. Yeah. We're gonna go hard, and we're gonna actually gonna go even harder this time. We got a great, great group yeah. of guys in the shop that are yeah. all like, "Hey, I want to help. I want to help." And I'm like, "Sweet, Man, you can, you can." <laughs> Jason and I talk about this a lot. Like, I feel the most alive when I'm working hard, and when I got a big project in front of me, and whenever I'm hustling and I'm on that grind, like, that's you feel the same way, and that's why I, I like I aggravate you about like, what are you doing? Like, I know exactly what you're oh. doing. This is like. If this has been eating at you this long, and the, the minute that uh, I saw your razor go up for sale, I was like, man, what's he doing? I talked to you about it, and you were like, man, I just, I want to scratch that itch. And I mean, the other day, whenever you posted up on your personal page and like, let's go new race car, I was, the first thing I could think is like, let's go. Like, we're building this as a wide up design car. So it's going to be a wide up design race car. We're going to run it underneath the, the, the brand of wide open design. We're taking the design that we've already worked on, refined through doing the razor we did with Hubert, a little green, a little blue. So what all is different in this thing that we've got to come in and how are we going to change the design to fit everything that's new? Because when I'm looking around here, you're already seeing the difference. I see a lot of stuff that was not on the original CAD drawing for this thing back when we did Hubert's thing. So let's talk about how are we fixing to do it? We're gonna start off with full 3D scans. I'm okay. actually getting the scanner set up now that everybody kind of cleared out of here for the evening. And I'm gonna start 3D scanning this as an entire vehicle and yep. then load it back up and take it home and blow it out. And then it's actually gonna come back in with all the body work and everything out of the way so I can get in here and get more accurate digital scans of all where the engine placement is, how all the suspension mounts to the chassis so we can compare it back to the drawings we already do yep. have to modify to get all this stuff to where it's placed correctly and it's going to work yeah we want to go in and scan everything to where it's sitting right now in the factory location that way we can build our chassis back to fit this factory type yep. scenario the 3d scanner we've got is a hexagon scanner it's an arm scanner it's the only way that this timeline that's honestly fairly ridiculous is going to be able to happen it's the only thing that's going to make that thing feasible it's like being able to scan the parts come back do all the design and then turn it into something that we manufacture whether that be laser cut plasma table tube bending everything like it's all going to be cad design as we're going when we get done with this we want to be able to say that as we're done we're launching a product and we'll be able to be able to call in and say hey i want one of those machines yeah and i would absolutely love for when we debut this thing in real time like People can start wanting it, and if they want to get it, they can get their hands on it. I want to debut it with a price tag. Absolutely. That That's my goal. I want this thing to become a product to where at King of the Hammers, if somebody walks up on this thing, they're like, how much is that chassis? Here's the chassis, it's this much money. Man, that's the cool thing. We get this thing done, platform gets out. Next year, we're going to, we're planning on doing some more racing. You're planning on doing some big events, side-by-side -side only events, kind of just help out all the people that are getting on board with this thing. It's going to give them for a value. We've got a whole little team effort going in with like the new buggies and stuff that are coming around the shop and just what all, where all they're going to go and who else going to get to see them. Try to help out with the partners that are getting on board with all that. So, man, I'm totally down with it. I say, let's go. Let's get this thing. Let's get that scanner set up. Let's get to work on it. Yeah, I'm going to try to get her knocked out before I go home. <laughs>